dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News First at Four. Good afternoon, I'm Steve Hensley. First at four upgraded charges for the man in a Southern Kentucky case that's drawn national attention. James Brick now faces a kidnapping charge after detectives in Laurel County say the teenage girl who was with him wanted to escape. She used a gesture made popular on TikTok that another driver recognized and called for help. WYMT's Phil Pendleton was in the courtroom today and has more. Before today, James Brick faced two charges, including unlawful imprisonment, but now he faces a charge of kidnapping as well as a much higher bond. James Brick walked into the Laurel County courtroom under a $10,000 cash bond, accused of imprisonment charges in the case of a 16-year-old. A detective testified the girl's family knew of Brick because they lived close to one another at a campground in Cherokee, North Carolina but she left with him and her family reported her missing. Later in Ohio, when Brick's family questioned the relationship, he left with her and headed south through Kentucky. That's when a driver noticed the hand gesture and resulted in deputies stopping the car they were in just off of exit 41 in London. From there, we got the uh, female out of the vehicle, turned out to be a 16-year-old uh, juvenile, uh, separated her from Mr. Brick. Uh, she indicated that she was there uh, and didn't want to be. Uh, and that she was very scared. The judge did find probable cause and the case now goes to a grand jury to consider a possible indictment. Now, if James Brick is released from jail, if he meets that higher $50,000 bond, he will be under home incarceration. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Sheriff's deputies have said Brick could face additional charges and some of those could be levied by federal authorities. As it's starting to get colder outside, many of us are turning on the heat in our house for the first time in a while. Turning the heat on in a house for the first time can sometimes be dangerous if not done properly. Before turning it on, you should clean out all vents and replace air filters, but also be prepared for a burnt smell. Viola Lewis at Wooten Volunteer Fire Department says you shouldn't panic right away when that happens, but warns to take precautions. Replace all of the filters, change everything, and just, if you smell something hot, turn it off. If you continue to smell it, then you will need to call 911. Lewis says the most dangerous heaters when not used properly are kerosene heaters. We'll have more on how to stay safe while heating your home this winter coming up at 6. Not much heating in use right now, at least during the daytime hours, because we continue to feature above average temperatures around the mountains, and that continues today. Outside right now, you see our time lapse view from I 64 at Moorhead, watching some clouds move in as we change the angle of that camera a little bit. Some high clouds working in, still a little bit of sunshine filtering through. More overcast beginning to work into places like Mount Vernon at this hour. That's something we're going to continue to watch as we finish up our. Tuesday outside temperatures remaining above average upper 60s low 70s out there right now in fact Williamsburg Harlan Hazard Jonesville all sitting in our warm spot right now at 72 degrees on this Tuesday afternoon few clouds working in right now if you want any showers you're gonna have to go back up towards the St. Louis metro area so I think we're going to stay dry as we watch some of these clouds work through overnight so partly cloudy skies tonight and those clouds will keep it eh, slightly less chilly into the mid 40s for overnight lows tonight. We do have some more use for the heat in terms of in the house because we're cooling off big time heading into the weekend coming up and I'll have the details on that coming up I should say in just a couple of minutes. Steve. All right, Evan, thank you. The House Committee investigating the January 6th assault on the Capitol has subpoenaed several top level members of the 2020 Trump reelection campaign. They include former campaign manager Bill Stepien, senior advisor Jason Miller, and executive assistant Angela McCollum. Also on the list, the former president's attorney, John Eastman, who incorrectly advised that then Vice President Mike Pence had the authority to overturn the election results, according to the Washington Post. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was also subpoenaed, in addition to Bernard Carrick, an associate of Rudy Giuliani. 
The former New York City Police Commissioner is demanding an apology. He says the committee chose to publicly defame him. There are reports that some of the former president's campaign aides set up a so-called war room in a D.C. hotel in an effort to overturn the election. Congressman Adam Schiff, who sits on the panel, has said anyone who defies subpoenas could face severe consequences. Let's go now to uh, Natalie Brand with more on this story. The House committee investigating the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol has subpoenaed several top-level members of the 2020 Trump re-election campaign. They include former campaign manager Bill Stepien, senior advisor Jason Miller, and executive assistant Angela McCallum. Also on the list, the former president's attorney John Eastman, who incorrectly advised that then-Vice President Pence had the authority to overturn the election results, according to the Washington Post. Former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn was also subpoenaed, in addition to Bernard Carrick, an associate of Rudy Giuliani. The former New York City Police Commissioner is demanding an apology. He says the committee chose to, quote, publicly defame him. The House Select Committee is looking into reports that some of the former president's campaign aides set up a so-called war room in a D.C. hotel in an effort to overturn the 2020 election. Congressman Adam Schiff, who sits on the panel, has said anyone who defies subpoenas could face severe consequences. Whatever penalties are necessary to ensure compliance. It depends on the person, but it could be jail time, yes. The House has already held former advisor Steve Bannon in criminal contempt, a case that's now in the hands of the Department of Justice. Attorney General Merrick Garland said there's an ongoing examination of the facts and the law. There's a separate legal fight launched by the former president over White House records leading up to January 6th. Mr. Trump has sued to keep them private, citing executive privilege. If a federal judge does not step in, the records could be released later this week. Natalie Brent, CBS News, Washington. CBS News has confirmed the House Select Committee has interviewed more than 150 people connected to the events of January 6th. The Justice Department has asked a federal judge to allow its vaccine requirement rule for employees to go forward after a temporarily after a temporary halt was issued, the requirement would make employers with 100 or more workers to implement a vaccine requirement or regular testing starting in January. In the filing, the Justice Department argues not allowing the rule would, quote, likely cost dozens or even hundreds of lives per day, in addition to large numbers of hospitalizations, other serious health effects, and tremendous costs. These are policies that are protecting workforces and avoiding disruptions related to employees getting sick with COVID. And while these legal battles play out in court, there are also developments on just who can get a vaccine. Pfizer has asked the FDA to grant emergency use authorization for its booster shots for all adults. This comes nearly one week after the administration's rollout of Pfizer's pediatric doses for kids ages 5 to 11. The Department of Homeland Security is expected to warn medical facilities to update certain software. It comes after researchers discovered a vulnerability that could allow hackers to access medical devices. Those include patients' monitors, as well as some anesthesia, ultrasound, and x-ray machines. Whether the devices could be accessed depends on the software they are running and internet access. The affected software is called the Nucleus Real-Time Operating System and it is owned by Siemens. The company has issued updates to fix the vulnerabilities. Let's head over to Wall Street now on this Tuesday. The Dow closes down today more than 111 points. We'll have more financial news in our next half hour, and we'll also have a glimpse of what travel experts are expecting on the roads and in the skies as we quickly approach the 2021 holiday season and what that may look like compared to what we saw before the pandemic. That's coming up at 4.30. But next here on First at Four, there are plenty of taxi services to choose from in most cities these days, but one British man has cornered the market when it comes to heavy lifts. Temperatures stay above average once again for the day today and even into tomorrow. But just a bit more of that on the way before big changes work in. I'll have the very latest coming through.